I inherited a 500-acre ranch along with 250 head of cattle out in West Texas from my great-grandfather who passed it down the line until it eventually ended up in my hands. It was his pride and joy. Growing up, he told stories of the cowboys who rode out west, settling land and setting up homes for their families. I was always awestruck at the surreal descriptions of their day-to-day -day lives and how the rugged cowpokes and the horses they rode upon were able to keep towns fed and their eventual start of rodeos and riding competitions that are still held today. Originally, my father was left with it after my grandfather had passed. He moved us into it when I was still young, along with my mother and my sisters, Allison and Angela. It was your typical ranch lifestyle growing up. My father would walk into my room at 4.30 in the morning, waking me up to go feed the cattle and the chickens along with the other animals we had at the time. My two younger sisters eventually were brought into the loop when they were a bit older, but were always treated like princesses. But when I failed a simple task like cleaning out the barn, there would be severe repercussions ranging from a beating with the belt to not getting dinner. But my sisters would always sneak me some food, and my mother would always try to justify why I would be the only one receiving the harsh punishments. I guess, looking back on it now, I understand why he was so hard on me. We had a few extra ranch hands that helped keep everything running. I remember one of my favorite people to work with was this older gray-haired guy called Pete. He had a thick handlebar mustache and looked like your typical cowboy. He'd always have a cigarette between his lips and told stories about the natives that lived here long before us and the spirits that supposedly haunted the land. My father, however, didn't like it due to the fact I'd have nightmares after. But the stories were what I always looked forward to when I got out of school and done with my chores. I never really experienced any paranormal events. The only thing that I had witnessed that truly left me in complete awe was when my father and I found a mutilated heifer that was torn completely in half, strung up in one of the trees out in the pasture. It wasn't uncommon to find a dead cow or two, but the way it was strung up in the tree to fight all logical explanation. My father was prepping me to run the ranch as I grew older, but teenage me had different plans at the time. I had enlisted in the military my senior year of high school. This had pissed my father off so bad that he told me not to bother coming back once I had graduated boot camp. They were harsh words, but I was used to it. When riding home, I'd always get letters back from my mother, who would give every detail on what happened that day or what was going on in town. It always kept me in high spirits. Before the sad events of 9-11, Nothing too serious or crazy was going on in the world, and the unit I was in cleaned rifles and parking lots for the majority of the time. I remember receiving a phone call from my father the day it happened. Son, you stay safe and come back in one piece. That was the only call I received from him for the next couple of years. I had done a few tours in the Middle East and Afghanistan before I decided to get out. In that period of time, I got married to my lovely wife, Kate, and had two kids of my own. Two daughters, Madison and Kimberly. They grew up with their mother for the most part. It was a strained relationship, thanks to the constant moving and the fact I'd be gone for six months at a time. She was left to care for them while I was gone. But we managed to make it work. She was ecstatic about the news that I was leaving the military. It was around that time I was told about my father who was fighting stage 3 lung cancer. I packed the family up, leaving North Carolina, and headed down to Texas. We spent the remaining hours of my father's life by his side. We talked about the crazy experiences we'd been through, and how being a parent was one of the most hardest things in life. When I was the last one in the room with him, he told me something that I didn't completely understand until now. Son... The ranch is a huge responsibility, and everything you have experienced in life has led up to you taking care of it. Whatever you do, don't leave it, no matter what happens, Chris. Promise me that. He spoke as tears swelled in his eyes. I promise. I held his hand. His grip was weak. It was no longer the hard and calloused strong hands he'd worked hard with. 
He eventually passed, leaving behind the ranch in his will. The will stated the ranch and its assets would go to the eldest child of the family. That happened to be me. My younger sisters didn't care much. They had moved to different states and had families of their own and were doing quite well. Everyone came down to the ranch after my father's funeral. It was a typical Texan week. There were tons of alcohol and barbecue passed around that night in honor of the hard man that was my father before leaving back to their homes. My sisters were the last to leave. They said their goodbyes, leaving my family alone on the 500 acres of open Texas plains. That was 12 years ago. The ranch itself consisted of a two-story house and a small living area for a few ranch hands on the eastern side of the property, as well as a large barn and a few chicken coops and a horse stable on the south side of the house. The rest was just open, arid plains filled with plenty of wildlife. I spent most of the day tending to the livestock and helping out with the repairs to the horse stable. Something had torn a few of the thick metal bars on one of the stalls from its housing. One of the ranch hands said it was some kind of dog that had done it. But I just brushed it off as some wise ass telling ghost stories to the new guys. Or one of the hands were baked when doing the rounds and had slammed into it with something. Take care boss. One of the ranch hands gave me a quick wave as he headed towards a beat up fort with the rest of the ranch hands. I'll see you all in the morning. Eat a large breakfast, we have a lot to do. I yelled towards the group. They had just gotten paid and were probably going to spend their allowance at a bar or some casino up in Oklahoma. My two dogs, Maxim, a 10 lap mix, and Zeus, a spotted border collie, ran around trying to round up a few cattle that had strayed too far from their herd as I took off my worn work gloves setting them on the hood of my old truck. Maxim, Zeus, load up. The two dogs came running over, jumping into the bed of the truck. After a few minutes of driving, I pulled up to the house. After putting the dogs up, I headed inside the house. Kate was making supper to a country tune. How's work? She asked, dancing over to me. Good. I had to fix up the horse table. She spun back around dancing back to the stove. Where are the kids? I asked, noticing the lack of complaints about not having good cell service. As they're still cleaning out the barn and chicken coops. Honey, wake up. There's something in the barn. My wife shook me violently, waking me from a deep sleep. What? I blinked a few times, trying to wake up. Her red hair was a mess. There's something in the barn, she hissed, clutching my wrist with a death grip. I quickly got dressed, pulling on a jacket and my old pair of work boots. I walked over to the closet, grabbing my father's lever action 3030, along with a flashlight. I'll go check it out. Stay inside. My watch showed it was 3.26 a.m. as I made my way down the hall. Dad, what was that? Madison stuck her head out of the room with a pair of headphones dangling from her neck. Go back to your room, I replied, just as Kimberly exited her room. I'm scared. Her voice trembled as she walked out into the hallway. Go into your mother's room, I responded quickly. They both ran into the room, talking in harsh tones as I continued down the hallway towards the stairs. Maxim and Zeus were going berserk. They were barking and straining hard against their chains, trying to get to the barn. The animals we had near the house were also in a panic state. I clicked on the flashlight. Its dull orange glow illuminated the dirt path leading towards the barn. What little remains from a few dead chickens lay in front of the barn. Feathers and blood were soaking into the ground. Something had pulled the door open, breaking the latch, securing it shut. I raised my rifle slowly, entering the doorway. Inside were stalls lining each side of the walls, running to the back of the barn. Inside were a few dairy cows I had bought a few weeks earlier. Their distraught cries filled the barn as I made my way towards the back. As I got closer, I noticed a blood trail leading to one of the stalls. With a steady hand, I pulled the stall door open, revealing a wounded dairy cow. She had a large gash running from her hindquarter to the middle of her sternum. 
Her entrails hung out as she lay breathing heavily in great distress as blood began to pool around her body. I knelt down beside her, resting my rifle on the stall wall, placing my hand on her head. What did this to you, girl? I spoke quietly. Something slammed the door shut behind me, causing me to damn near jump. I scooped up my rifle and aimed at the door. If you're out there, make yourself known or you're gonna get shot. I yelled, trying to keep my composure. There was no response. I flipped the latch and swung the door open, sweeping the area for any potential threats, but only found a set of footprints in the dirt-covered floor leading back to the entrance. They looked canine in nature, but were too large to be any dog or coyote that I've ever seen. I ran back into the house, slamming the door shut and locking it. Honey, call the sheriff. I quickly made my way back to the bedroom. Kate had her phone in hand and was talking to a dispatcher. Something broke into our barn. Yes, yes, please, send a deputy out as soon as possible. I grabbed my truck keys and cell phone. I'll be back. Don't let anyone inside. I grabbed the clock 19 that I kept on the nightstand and handed it to her. What's this for? She asked, confused. Honey, something got one of the dairy cows, and I think it's going to get more. They were really scared now. Don't leave, Kimberly cried. Listen, you shoot anyone that's not me or the sheriff. Don't leave the house. Lock all the doors and windows. I gave Kate a quick kiss and headed back to the living room. I took Maxim and Zeus off their chains and led them to my truck, opening the passenger door and letting them in the cab. I slid into the driver's seat and started the truck. Its large V8 engine shook the cab as it idled in the cold December air. I put the truck in drive and headed out towards the pasture to check on the livestock closest to the farmstead. After driving for a few minutes, my phone rang. It was Kate. The sheriff is on his way over. What do you want me to tell him when he gets here? Her voice was tense. I thought for a moment before answering. Tell him to meet me near the fishing pond we drink at. It's the one on the western side of the pasture. He knows what I'm talking about. There was a small moment of silence. All right, please be careful. She hung up the phone. The only sounds in the truck now were coming from the two panting dogs and the low hum from the radio. After a few more minutes of driving, I arrived at the fishing pond. A large cluster of oak trees were lined near the bank on the opposite side. The headlights from my truck illuminated a small herd of cattle bunched up near the bank of the pond. They were all letting out distress calls as they began to move towards my direction. The hackles on Zeus and Maxim's necks were sticking up. Both of them were emitting deep guttural growls. Their eyes were focused on something off in the distance. I followed their gaze, but I couldn't see what they were seeing. I exited the truck, leaving the dogs inside with the windows cracked, cautiously making my way towards the bank. The herd was walking around me when I spotted it. Two large yellow eyes piercing through the darkness at me. I glanced at one of the cattle hurrying by for a split second. It had a large chunk missing from its right flank and a large jagged claw mark running down its ribcage. The dogs were barking widely in the truck now as the cattle began to run in a panic. I could hear the sound of heavy footsteps getting closer and closer as I began to back paddle towards the truck. I could barely make the outline of it as it closed the distance on all fours. Adrenaline was burning through my veins as I raised the rifle and started firing at it. Time seemed to speed up as I cranked the lever, feeding in a new round after every shot. Why the fuck did I bring a lever action rifle? I cursed to myself for not bringing my AR as I ripped the driver's side door open trying to get in. Before I was able to get a foot in the door, Zeus and Maxim jumped out hitting the ground running at full speed towards the creature. Get back here! I yelled to no effect as they circled the monster. It was in full view now, its figure illuminated by the headlights of my truck. It looked like a massive humanoid dog on two feet with large sharp claws. The creature swung at Maxim and Zeus, trying to get them to back off. Huge plumes of smoke came from its mouth and nostrils with each swing but they didn't budge. Zeus latched onto its hind leg, causing it to let out a deep cry. It swung back at Zeus, sending him tumbling off into the brush. 
This pissed off Maxim. Maxim latched onto its left bicep, shaking his head like a deadly game of tug of war. I continued firing into the creature's chest before he swung Maxim into my lane of fire. I immediately stopped firing, fearing I'd shoot my dog. That's when I saw the flashing red and blue neon lights from a sheriff's vehicle bouncing off of the treetops. The creature swung at Maxim, hitting him on the side. This caused Maxim to yelp and release the creature's arm. What in God's name? The sheriff said awestruck by the scene. Fucking shoot it! I began firing again. One of my rounds hit it in the eye, causing it to stumble backwards. The sheriff began firing on it now, but it seemed to make little difference, as the creature got down on all fours and ran back into the darkness. When I got called out here, I wasn't expecting this. He let out a breath. A few hours later, a black SUV pulled up, and two men wearing black suits asked me a series of questions regarding the event. Are you sure it wasn't a coyote? Have you been drinking this evening? Are you sure it wasn't a pack of feral hawks? I had the same response to all of their questions. No. They went on for another two hours before they finally questioned my wife and kids along with the sheriff. They took the only copy of the dash cam footage from the sheriff's truck and eventually left. A helicopter flew over the house out towards the pasture with a huge spotlight on it, circling the area for a few minutes before leaving. We sat at the dining room table near the kitchen, talking about what had transpired in the past few hours. None of us could believe it. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. The sheriff exhaled as he took his cowboy hat off, placing it on the table. Neither have I. Whatever that thing was, it's still out there. I responded, looking out the window towards the moonlit pastures. In case you were wondering, Zeus and Maxim were doing fine. They were a little bit banged up, but after a few days, they were back on the job rounding up cattle like nothing ever happened. I hired a few more ranch hands to do nightly inspections around the pasture to make sure the cattle were not being harmed. So far, it has been working. The guys were also telling me about seeing strange lights hovering over the property. I don't want to even think about. What? That could entail 